guests are so exceedingly rare in this house that I and my dogs hardly know how to receive them. Your health, sir? Uh, thank you. Trust that you find Mrs. Dean to be an excellent housekeeper. She has served in the family many years. Yes, indeed. He found his landlord very intelligent on the topics they touched. He knew by instinct that Heathcliff's reserve sprang from an aversion to showy displays of feeling. Since Lockwood's own unhappy encounter with a lady where he gained the undeserved reputation of heartlessness, he had shrunk icily into himself, like a snail. Sit down. You'll be here soon. Isn't this one Juno? A beautiful animal. What a wild evening. You should not have come out. May, may I help you lift the kettle from the fire? I don't want your help. I can get it for myself. I beg your pardon. Were you asked to tea? I shall be glad to have a cup, and I fear that I shall be weather-bound for half an hour. If you could afford me shelter during that space? Half an hour? I wonder you should select the thick of a snowstorm to ramble about in. Do you know that you run the risk of being lost in the marshes? People familiar with these moors often miss their road on such evenings, and I can tell you there is no chance of a change at present. Perhaps I could get a guide among your lads, and he could stay at the Grange till morning. Could you spare me one? No, oh, I could not. Oh, indeed. Are you going to make the tea? Is he to have any? Get it ready, will you? Now, sir, bring forward your chair. I don't think it possible for me to get home without a guide. As to staying here, I don't keep accommodations for visitors. Zilla, the stout housewife who had come to Lockwood's rescue with the dogs, gave him a glass of brandy, sympathised with his sorry predicament, and showed him upstairs to his room. Just you hide the candle and, and don't you make a noise. The master has some odd notion about this room and we never let anyone lodge here willingly. Why is that? I don't know, son. I've only lived here a year or two.